Alrighty, so I've finished playing every Deep Space Nine video game, uh, and that's and I'm, I am, that's true. I played them all. I have recorded everything. You, they're also on my channel. However, new information has come to light in the form of more stuff I had to buy on eBay. Uh, there were two pieces of, I guess we'll call them entertainment software, uh, featuring Deep Space Nine and entirely focused on Deep Space Nine specifically, not not Star Trek in general, because Deep Space Nine uh, characters and ships and t stuff does appear in the broader Star Trek media universe. So they those characters and situations do show up elsewhere, but I've only been focusing on like specific Deep Space Nine branded. Oh, I think the the computer here is telling me to get a move on. So that was a hint as to the first bit of software that I'm going to be talking about. The Star Trek Deep Space Nine Limited Edition CD-ROM Entertainment Utility. Uh, hold mouthful. Uh, that doesn't really tell you what the heck is in here. Oh man, I have to keep moving the mouse or the wallpaper will pop up. Uh, but basically this was just... It was a limited edition giant box containing giant, there it is, giant box, bigger than my head, uh, containing, um, I guess you would call, I guess, yeah, entertainment software is really the best way to put it. Uh, let's see what the back of the box says. Launch your computer into the 24th century. It's an, in, it's an unpredictable environment full of intergalactic sights and sounds where bizarre life forms gather for fun. With the Star Trek Deep Space Nine entertainment utility installed, your computer will become the most popular high-tech hangout in the office or home. This limited edition CD-ROM contains screensavers, audio clips, video clips, jigsaw puzzles, and wallpapers, all captured from the popular Star Trek Deep Space Nine television series, all guaranteed to make your computer a blast. Use Image Carousel to create a customized screensaver with spectacular full-motion video clips and still images with audio options, including privacy protection, audio on off, random or preset videos and images, and much more. Customize your desktop with one of 30 full screen wallpaper images. You can even have different images appear randomly each time you start Windows. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's basically uh, a CD-ROM that has a screensaver setup and screensavers, if you're not familiar, are uh, what you've seen pop up um, it used to be an issue that if you left your computer sitting on the same screen too long, all those images, all those icons would get burned into your screen. Uh, so you needed screen savers to kind of pop up and change the imagery and cycle through a bunch of different things so that the screen, that, that wouldn't happen to your, your monitor. Uh, and then, yeah, so you could also customize it based on, you know, whatever you decided to do. So, yeah, here I have installed everything already. So let's start going through uh, each item here and see what we got. First is the personal desktop here. So yeah, this thing um, is what lets you customize your desktop. For example, you can set different sounds to um, different functions. Like Windows Startup would be... Uh, how do you play the sound here? So, when you start your Windows machine, that's what you'd hear right there. Uh, what else can we do? You can view clips. Um, what else can we do? Uh, we don't need the help file. Uh, yeah, I guess this part's pretty straightforward. It's just um, telling you... Oh, I got it wrong, actually. Windows Startup would, would play the DS1 theme. Let's hear it. So there you go. When you start Windows, that's what you would hear. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, when you close an application, let's see what, what they assigned to that. You'd hear this. Like I'm about to hear now. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, it lets you customize your desktop a bit. Wallpaper. Okay. It'll, it'll just randomly assign a wallpaper of its own choosing. I didn't even get to pick. Uh, but that's fine. I'll take it. You can see here that's the the Defiant, same ship I have in my uh, setup here on the screen. Uh, what else? We have the DS9 Chooser. Let's see what this does. Um, oh, this lets you cycle through 
your uh, wallpaper setup. So let's test it out. Uh, that's really it. Uh, I think it would have kept going, but I the, mo the mouse moved. So yeah, the pr yeah. I guess if you want to mess with this thing, the problem is moving the mouse at all uh, makes the screensaver go away, as it should. That's the function of it. But let's see if we can get it to stay up. Yikes. Okay, sound not working so good, but but there you go. So it just has a bunch of different images uh, somewhere. Here it is. You can assign a password to your screensaver if you want to kind of if you want to make sure no one else can get into it. Uh, all the different categories of stuff that'll appear, all the images and information, the type of transition. Uh, let's do vertical blind. Sure, why not? Uh, no delay between images. It's already linked to the right folder with the images, uh, where, the, where the images are contained. Uh, let me test one more time. This dreary little gulag could use a little color, some excitement, and who better to provide that than moi? There's Q, who I think only appeared once on Deep Space Nine. He wasn't, he was more of a next generation character than Deep Space Nine. Uh, but there you go. So you can, you can set up your wallpaper, uh, rather your screensaver, configuration properly. Uh, what else do we have? DS9 carousel. Oh, oh that's, the, that's just a shortcut to what we were already looking at. Uh, so for context, all of this would have been, yeah, this game, this thing shipped in 1996. Um, so in 96, you would have had been running Windows 95. That would have been the new hotness. And all of this stuff would have been mind-blowing. The fact that you could customize, well, the fact that you have a graphical interface at all, and that you can customize it to kind of this degree, this this all would have been very impressive back then, I guess. So, um, so yeah, that's that's what the purpose of that would have been. And here we go. Here, I think this is, that's all fine and good. You know, you can customize your, your desktop. That's great. But we get to the more, most entertaining part of this whole thing in the uh, puzzle um, game. It's it's just a bunch of jigsaw puzzles you can cut. You can kind of load and try to piece together. Let's uh, let's play one. I think yeah, this one's this one's short enough. Let's do it. So uh, I'm going to play this jigsaw puzzle as quickly as I can. So this thing is the um, uh, well, it says there it's Odo. So it's the character of Odo from Deep Deep Space Nine, and uh, I can probably put them together pretty easily. I know the characters very well. So I, I should know where everything goes. Uh, I don't actually do jigsaw puzzles very often. There might be like pro strats that I don't have, like in terms of like, well, I know this part. I know all the flat bits kind of inform you as to where things belong. So like that, that the top of this is flat. So that must be the top of the puzzle that goes up there. Let's at least line things up. That's going to go on the left side. That's going to be the top left corner. From the look of it. Uh, that goes there. That's going to be at the bottom. That's going to be at the top. That's going to be floating in the middle somewhere. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. That's the first connection. And it sticks together. That's great, too. All right. Let's go to that. Um... Default box. I, I guess, I guess this is if you want to like contain the pieces somewhere else. That's uh, feels a bit weird. I don't know why you would need that necessarily. Uh, sure, let's get that out of the way. All right, this is the bottom left corner. I can tell that this piece looks like it's gonna pop in right there. And then this piece looks like it's gonna pop in there. Um, where's his face? Oh, there it is. Yikes. Is it going to pop in? That is it. Hey, there we go. Yeah, that's, that's an easy part right there. This face, that's the top right corner, probably. Oh, wait, I see that. This goes here. This goes there. Uh, bada boom. All right, this is going to be the bottom 
somewhere. That's the bottom right corner. Somewhere on the right side. Uh, I was hearing from a few folks that uh, I guess jigsaw puzzles kind of blew up during the pandemic, right? Like it, it was just something kind of simple and easy to zone out with. Just, just making puzzles or putting them together. Uh, as for me, I decided my escape was making these videos. This piece goes there. Yeah, sweet. I feel like jigsaw, uh, jigsaw puzzle heads are looking at me like, no, you're doing it wrong. That's the slow or that's the worst way. Uh, we'll get there. Don't worry. See, I'm, 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 I'm piecing this thing together. I'm, I'm making moves. Hey, I'm making moves here. Relax. All right. Uh, I think it's pretty good progress. The, that goes, no, that doesn't go there. Does this go here? Yeah. This thing, that looks like it goes between the head and the top left corner. Let's see. Yep. All right. Um, that's another middle piece. That's just a big chunk of clothing somewhere. Who knows where? Oh, right there. Part of the shoulder. And then this bit is his chest. This bit is going to go right there. All right, that's on the left. Hmm. I feel like I'm missing a... Oh, you know what? I think this... I, I'm extending this thing like top to bottom, but I don't think it's that... Uh, I don't think the image is that tall. So I'll, I'll bring this in shortly. Here's a piece of shoulder that goes there. I am, I'm missing a piece at the top. I mean, is there anything off the screen? Do I have to scroll? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Oh wait, no, this does connect here, my bad. There it is. All right, I need a, I need something. Does this go here? Yeah, it does. And then this goes there. All right, how many more edge pieces do we have? This goes there, I bet. And this goes there. All right, let's get all these pieces that are clearly just kind of in the middle somewhere. Let's get them. Does this go here? Oh, it does. Does this? Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is a short puzzle. All right. There we go. That's going to be a chunk of the body. It looks like these are all bits and pieces from the right. Oh, I should have timed it so I could uh, gamify this just a bit more. Too late. Uh, all right. These are all the left pieces. That goes there. That goes there, and boom. Congratulations, the puzzle is finished, elapsed. Oh, they timed it for me, that's great. Uh, five and a half, or almost six minutes. Uh, that's probably very, very slow, but that's fine. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna exit this thing. Do I wanna save it? No. Uh, and that's it for the entertainment utility. Uh, I guess I can load up some of the other puzzles real quick, just to get a hand, take a look at what they had. In mind. This one says DS9. I guess it's the station, but it does look like it's uh, more complicated, right? Smaller pieces, probably a bigger puzzle. So that's, that's DS9. Let's quit out of this. Let's load up uh, Hunter. Yikes. All right. <laughs> oh man, this is one where you probably have to zoom out. How do you... Does it even have a zoom? Oh, whoa, I don't even think it has a zoom feature. Um, uh, I know what this is, though. Hunter, uh, given the date of this thing... Actually, no, this is from 96, but they're using stuff from, like, Season 1. So I, I think this would be a Hunter from the Season 1 episode. Um, 
Oh, I forgot what it's called. It's the episode with Tosk. Anyone who knows DS9 knows, knows that episode. All right, let's, and then let's see what the last puzzle uh, would have been Quark. Okay. And yeah, that looks like another medium difficulty, maybe hard difficulty. Smaller pieces, obviously. But yeah, that would have been Quark, who's kind of Odo's uh, biggest frenemy. Or more, if you would believe, like, uh, the fandom. They want to hook those two up. All right, well, that, now that's it. So that's it for the uh, entertainment, utility. Uh, so, yeah, again, if, you're, if you're, you have your Windows 95 PC back in 90, 90, 1996 when this got published out, um, this would have been, like, a pretty, you know, pretty good way to pass the time, I think. Uh, I should mention who worked on this thing. Uh, it was distributed by... SSI Distribution Services, Simon & Schuster, who's actually a, publish, a book publisher, but they also published a couple of the video games. So it seems like they've been involved with Star Trek, uh, at least in the 90s they were. This was developed by Sound Source Interactive, that, which has the address on here, Westlake Village, California. If you want to hit them up on AOL, it's uh, online at AOL.com, or SSI online at AOL. Uh, other companies that worked on this are Image Carousel, uh, Jixa, that's the puzzle, the puzzle maker, Q Sound, and RI Soft Systems. Um, a first year officer assigned as our liaison. Starfleet Command will hear of this. Yes, they will. That's, that's definitely a season one episode, that clip. All right. Uh, one final bit of information which I just think is really funny is the system requirements. You need a 386 slash 33 running Windows. 3.1x or Windows 95. Oh, so you, you could have been on the older Windows 3.1 and this still would work. You need 8 megabits of RAM, a 2x CD-ROM drive, a Super VGA monitor, I guess, or graphics card that runs at 640 by 480 resolution, 256 colors. And finally, you need a sound card for all those sweet crackly sounds we just heard. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the Deep Space Nine limited edition CD-ROM Entertainment Utility. Uh, in my case, I have the... So of, of 250,000 copies they sold, I have number 9577. Pretty early, early copy. All right, now let's hop out of this zone and into a less entertaining zone. Or less entertainment... Well, we'll see what it... We'll, we'll see what it is. No, I don't want to... Look. Actually, I should let it run. Oh, well. This is the... As you can read up there, this is the series guide and script library. Um, the Dark Star Trek Deep Space Nine companion includes video trailers for all episodes. So, uh, oh, I have the book. I should have brought it out. There's a book called a Star Trek Deep Space Nine companion, which, um, as the name says, it's just this huge tome that kind of is a companion for every season of the show. So... It's behind the scenes information, anecdotes, stories, photographs from behind from the production of the show. So if you're a fan of the show and you want to know more, you buy this fat book and you can kind of read through it. This thing, uh, if I can get the camera to cooperate, there it is. They, so this companion, it come, again, comes in a huge old PC big box that just has like a CD-ROM inside. Um, this thing would have, you would have bought this if you wanted to have the book, but then also have... Uh, here, I can read this to you. Includes the original scripts and video trailers for all 176 episodes. Uh, in 1993, fans were introduced to the third landmark Star Trek series, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Taking creator Gene Roddenberry's universe in a whole new direction, it chronicled the intense experiences of the intrepid denizens of a frontier space station poised at the crossroads of the galaxy. So, space western. Uh, though this series has now ended, you can rel relive each of its 176 thrilling episodes of the Star Trek Deep Space Nine companion. This way I go. Uh, it's the only complete, fully interactive resource available on CD-ROM for the Star Trek Deep for the Deep Space Nine fan, with an ultra user-friendly interface, context-sensitive searches, and hot-linked results. You, the user, can access updated entries now with the complete six and seven seasons a complete full-text library of the original shooting scripts for every episode, all full, fully searchable. Includes the original text for the heart-rending final episode, What You Leave Behind. 
Video trailers for all episodes, each week's coming attractions as they originally aired. Episode summaries with complete listings of actors, writers, directors, and creative credits. From the discovery of the wormhole to the exploration of the Gamma Quadrant to the unforgettable saga of the Dominion War, the Star Trek Deep Space Nine companion has it all. So there you go. So this is just like a massive resource um, published in 1999, which uh, the internet was a thing at the time, right? But, but you know, multimedia, CD-ROMs like these uh, were a big thing at the time. The internet was a big thing. So everyone was trying to hop on this bandwagon and kind of publish CD-ROMs of whatever entertainment products they own. So in this case, um, I think it's pretty cool. The creators decided, let's take all of the scripts, right? Make a, put them into like TXT files or something, and then make this CD-ROM in which everything is, I should just fire it up. I'm talking too much. Um, yeah, you can see there another Simon & Schuster joint, Paramount Interactive, a bunch of other companies, Emergy and QuickTime, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, so this thing just lets you... Now establishing data link. Welcome to the episode module, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Accessing. Ready. That's, by the way, the... That's Major Barrett, who was the... Who, who, yeah, was the... She passed away, but she was the um, wife of Gene Roddenberry. She is a major character in both the original series and uh, the later series, like Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, uh, in which she plays Loxana Troy, who is just a kind of a outlandish, kind of free, free-for-all character, real, real hippie of a character. She's very, like, pro-sex, pro, pro, you know, pro, pro uh, live-your-life, be-happy, etc. Um, so anyway, she, that was her. That was her voice. Like, you, can, you can tell immediately. So that's cool. So they got her to do the voice, um, and they basically built this interactive... Um, database, I guess, interactive uh, way or method to interact with the scripts from the show and all those videos, that the trailers that they talked about. So, for example, let's say I want to find something. I want to find... Uh, let's get rid of that. Let's say I want to find when they talked about uh, Vulcans. So if I type in Vulcan... There you go. So now I can find every script in which they talk about Vulcans Let's pick a random episode here, this one. All right. So now uh, you can read some of the details here. We can scroll down and read the whole script, I assume. Oh no, this is the plot summary. Uh, there we go. This is the script you view right here. So it's kind of explaining, you know, what, what are you looking at here? It's just a massive database of the scripts as text files, I would assume. Uh, let's find the line. Gowron, leader of the Klingon Empire. As of today, I am assumed to... I, as of today, I'm assuming direct command of our forces. Uh, that's not a good Gowron. But uh, there you go. You can search all the scripts. Uh, let's go... Entry search. What is this? Hmm. Uh, let's go back. So you can navigate this kind of like a web page, which again at the time would have been kind of state of the art for interacting with stuff. Here you can see some photos from episodes. And presumably you can quit out. There it is. Quit out, quit out. Uh, what appears as an innocent child. Something wrong with the baby? No, but he's not a baby anymore. Is rapidly evolving into a savage warrior. <laughs> Stop! Stay where you are! Now, can Odo change his destiny? Give me the chance to find out if he really is just a killing machine before he becomes an unstoppable assassin. Oh, he trusts me. But can you trust him? Next time on Star Trek. Sorry, I clicked the enlarge button. Deep Space Nine. Cool. Yeah, I... Uh, Watching that clip, I was like, that's really small. And then I realized, like, oh, there's like a... You can expand. Let's pick another episode. I want to watch another trailer. Why not? No. In the cards. Why not? Let's do that. All right. Play. It's... 
priceless. A 1951 Willie Mays rookie card? This is how I can cheer up my dad. Everybody wants it. Ten bars. So! But to get it... That baseball card is the answer. Cisco's son gets in over his head. Do you want to die? Could Jake's innocent quest... It all makes sense now. You accuse the Kai of kidnapping? Set off an intergalactic war... You're starting to go over the edge. ...on the next Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Is that the trailer guy? That is so dramatic. I think that's the, the, the trailer guy. Don, Don, Don Pardo, something like that. Like the guy who used to voice all the trailers in his very serious, dramatic voice. Um, and that's really funny for this episode because this is not a dramatic episode at all. It, it is, uh, it's a, one of the more lighthearted, lighthearted episodes uh, of the series for sure. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it for the companion really. So it's just every single episode, it's script, it's plot summary, it's a uh, dramatic trailer, and I guess some photos to give you a, a thing to click on. Because again, the whole idea here is the, the future is all about interactivity and like multimedia and the internet. So clicking things and having searchable uh, resources like this was a big thing at the time. Um, so yeah, what else is worth noting here? Uh, yeah, I mentioned the companies already. Simon & Schuster, Paramount Interactive, uh, Imergy. I think Imergy seems to have been the main uh, developer for this. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, system requirements, let's do that for this one. So you need a Windows 95 or 98. Uh, this is a 98 machine here. Uh, Pentium 90 or higher, 16 megabytes free RAM, twice as m much RAM as the last game, or the last software. Uh, 15 megabytes hard, drive, hard disk space, 16-bit color, 2x CD-ROM, 4x recommended. Uh, it, oh, it's on Macintosh too. If you're on a Macintosh, you need a powered PC, system 7.5 or above, 16 megs of free RAM, 15 megs of hard disk space, thousands of colors. You need thousands of colors? What? That's a weird requirement. Uh, a 2x CD-ROM, 4x recommended uh, if you're on a Mac. Yeah, you'd have to, on your power PC there. Uh, and somebody put a label on here, they sold this for 29 bucks. It's not bad. I, I paid more than that, I'll tell you that much, from eBay. This is not a good, this is a time of uh, very expensive prices on eBay for everything. Uh, that's, yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, the last noteworthy thing here is it, they point out in the back that it includes seasons six and seven now. So I think what they were doing with these things is they were selling earlier versions with, you know, if, if you were up to, if they were up to season four in the show, they'd sell you a version of this that's up to season four and they kept updating it, I would assume. So there, there are like incomplete versions of this thing out, out in the wild. Um, but this is the complete one. This is all, all seven seasons of the show and everything contained therein. Uh, and that's it. So uh, yeah, this is kind of the end of, of everything. I've, d I've played through every Deep Space Nine video game in full, and they're all on the channel. I created a uh, brief history of the Deep Space Nine video games that kind of covers everything. Uh, and then now we've looked at the fun kind of miscellaneous software bits that, that we're releasing at the time as well. So that's it. So uh, like I've said in every video, I think just, you know, I talked about this, these things so much just because I love Deep Space Nine. It's a great show. Uh, go watch it. Uh, go watch it. And if you love it as much as I do, you'll end up finding all sorts of other uh, cool uh, pieces, pieces of uh, merch and other things that are interesting that uh, accompany and, you know, enhance the experience, I guess you could say. So, uh, yeah, that'll do it for this video. Until the next one, see ya.